Hello, it's Andy Circus here, and I am in the studio, as you can see, and thrilled to be having this opportunity to read the audiobook version of The Hobbit by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. One of my favourite books, one of the first books I ever read uh, as a child, and um, just to be able to be doing this after having done it as the Hobbitathon all in one hit, but to come back and refine it and uh, and to work on it in great detail um, is such a great thrill. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, yes, the first time I read The Hobbit, I think I was about nine or ten years old, and I remember vividly reading it on the bus going to school every day. Uh, yeah, the 273 bus for going from Ryslip to Ealing. I remember... I remember the illustrations, I remember Alan Lee's illustrations, uh, particularly of, of course of Gollum. Um, but I just remember being totally intoxicated by this, this incredible adventure and, uh, and, and it's just stuck with me ever since. And, and uh, funnily enough, a, a school friend of mine sent me the original copy that I had, which he which has somehow ended up in his possession, I don't know how. Um, but after I'd done The Lord of the Rings, he, I, 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 remember, I received it from him and it, there it was, it said A Circus in the top right hand corner and the year. So I do vividly remember it. Um, yeah, it always stuck with me and, and of course uh, never ever knew that I'd become so intimately involved with it at that time. I think what's so incredible about The Hobbit is that it is one of the greatest epic adventures of all time. And it's got a beautiful balance of uh, storytelling by, by, an, by, by the voice of the author um, so, that, so that you're led along through this adventure. I mean, adventures, whether you are an outdoor person or you like... Uh, going for jogging, or you like, or or you you like reading about adventures, or going on holiday. They're all they're all things that are very very uh, basic in the human condition. We like to explore and go into um, unknown territory. I think, and that's that's exactly what this story is all about. Um, it is it's be such a beautifully crafted world, of course, and 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 a world that obviously went on to to grow into something even bigger. But his his uh, Tolkien's understanding of uh, the, the world that he had created was so thorough, and the way that he describes it and uh, takes you on that extraordinary epic um, ad ad adventure journey um, I, I think is is really why why oh, obviously the characters too and the um, and particularly because it's so relatable to because somewhere within us all there is a, a, a Bilbo Baggins a character that is split a character that is wanting to be that hero wanting to be out there doing those adventurous things and and at the same time understanding that life can be dangerous and threatening and we have to challenge ourselves and sometimes those challenges are, are very hard to to uh, to take so i think i think it really connects with the human condition in a really uh, powerful way and particularly for a, a younger reading audience but then of course as with all great works, classic works of literature, you can revisit it at any point in your life and it means something totally different to you each time you, you take it on. I, I, I have so little time to read and I love reading and I just, over the years with work and concentrating on various different projects, I, I've, I have very little time to actually sit down and read a novel or a piece of fiction. I'm normally reading research for work that I'm working on, uh, films or TV projects or characters that I'm working on, but, but wonderfully audiobooks are going to step in and uh, and do a lot of the work for you and there's nothing more pleasurable than than uh, than having a book read to you I think um, and and allowing that voice to take you on that on that journey on that uh, into that world whatever world it is and 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 actually it's a contract you make with that person and that voice and and I find it very mesmeric and you can also be doing other things at the same time let's face it and still absorb it uh, so so I, as of someone who is a bit of a multitasker and having to do so I mean to be that person um, I find them a, a, an incredibly enriching way of, of receiving story um, often driving or often moving from place to place or you know traveling um, I find them really mesmeric and, and totally absorbing. And at the same time, as I say, you can get on with other stuff too. 
audio books are really tough. They're really, really hard work because it's in really super intense. And um, the, the precision that you need to pull it off is, is quite, obviously, when you're filming, you, there, there's a precision to that work too. It, it's there, there, there. There's a real intensity, and in it. it is. All, it's all on you as the as the performer, and you have the way that you have to think your way through it. Is you know you have to. Um, I mean, in this particular case, as I say, I wanted to give as as full blooded reading as I, as I could with the with the Hobbit. Um, it, it felt like the characters are so vivid and beautifully written. And I wanted to, to lift them off the page. So in this respect, it is like um, playing the characters. Some some books, when you read them, of course, they're 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 more they're more a straight read, and you're more restrained as a as the, as the narrator, if you like. But this one has such vivid characters and demands, and also having lived through the experience of making films about these, you know, about the Hobbit, you know, making the Hobbit trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, and being intimately kind of involved um having lived in other incarnations of uh, of, of, of Tolkien's work um I felt a very special affinity with this particular book um because it was one of the first books I read as a child um but also obviously because I've played the one of the characters um very memorable characters from the book and so I, so it's starting from that premise well if I'm going to do Gollum again then it really behoves me to do an attempt to do the other characters without doing impersonations of um, Ian McKellen or, 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 or Martin Freeman, for instance, or any of the, any of the other guys, but nodding towards their work, uh, but making it my own. Because, I mean, I, I, as well as working on, on, on The Hobbit as an actor, of course, I spent a, a lot of time working on, as a second unit director on that film, on those films. Um, so I, so I, knew the breadth and scale of the story and uh, and what it entails uh so so i want so that was the that was the excitement about about reading this particular book to re to revisit that and to to give it it reminded me I, I, when i was approaching it it reminded me of um i guess how dickens used to read aloud his his books he would go on book tours and uh, and read passages from Oliver Twist and Great Expectations and 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 actually uh, there's something I really like about that that there's this mixture of theater and um theater and and and, uh, and literature that, that 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 comes together at a certain point and so that's that was that was certainly my approach this time <laughs> Gollum has never really gone away, much as though um, I, I try to let him sort of disappear from my life. He seems to always pop up. So, uh, of course, playing him the first time round uh, in Lord of the Rings, that was a huge learning curve and, and, and it kind of opened up a whole new world of, of artistic expression with performance capture and so on and so forth. Uh, and so uh, that, that period of time, three years of making The Lord of the Rings, I got to know that character intimately in the, in the dual sides of the personality, the Gollum Smeagol personality. And then, of course, revisiting him in the Hobbit trilogy. Uh, and, and, and then all of the other incidents in between. And Gollum just keeps coming back. And uh, I guess there isn't a day that passes when people don't ask me to uh, to to do Gollum's voice or to do a, a answer phone message for them or uh, you know a message for their loved ones or or bar mitzvah messages or I mean you name it I've done them uh, so he's he's sort of like my Dorian Gray I guess you know I'm going to be staring at him forever and uh, I was asked once I think it was the Guardian newspaper asked me what what <laughs> what do you want written on your tombstone? Which is quite a personal thing to ask. And I said uh, something like, probably not just the guy who played Gollum. You know, uh, I mean, I th that's, that's how much uh, how much of an association I have with him. He's 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 never far away. Uh, so when it came to to reading Riddles in the Dark and performing him again for the Hobbitathon and now for for the book, um, I mean, I've got such a love for that character, of course, and it's constantly is such a complex character psychologically emotionally physically uh, complex character it's just been lovely um being able to get back into him and and actually say you know go back to the source material and and, and relive it again
So I had to um, make a decision really about about uh, how I was going to approach them and not having the time to to fully obviously investigate the characters to any any depth anywhere near obviously what I've uh, ha the, the facility I've had to do that with Gollum but but to make quick decisions about the characters I mean I I've really enjoyed that as a challenge and I actually wanted to when I did the Hobbitathon I wanted to actually really feel them in the moment and f see what came I mean I had s an idea of how I wanted to to voice uh, some of the characters but some of them I I, I really sort of left to chance wanting to just see what came out and that was really exciting and and doing it on the fly with that adrenaline during the Hobbitathon where I couldn't stop I just had to keep going forward um, uh, that, that, that sort of threw lots of interesting ideas and things up so coming back to do it again I'm sort of refining them uh, refining versions of, of what what came out during that the Hobbitathon reading and and I mean, I am nodding to some of the characters and the voices that are still in my head from the the, the actors' portrayals in the movies. But but as I say, I'm not not t doing impersonations of them. I'm trying to find my own uh, take on those characters. That's a really difficult one that, uh, because there are so many brilliant characters. When, when, I, when I did the Hobbitathon, and uh, I actually really loved reading Smaug. I, I just thought this character is extraordinary, and uh, I'm looking for. We haven't got there yet in the in the in the recording, and I'm looking forward to getting to that again. Um, I, I love Bjorn as a as a as a character too, um, and these are just uh, you know the, the minor ones really. I mean, Gollum goes without saying. We, we don't need to talk about Gollum. Um, but uh, but but Bilbo also is such an amazing character, and the arc of his journey is phenomenal, really. From this this person who's an armchair traveller who, who 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 doesn't want to move from the comforts of home all the way through to taking on some of the biggest challenges humanity has thrown at him, and uh, um, and and seeing that that growth and seeing how disrespected he is all the way along and then and then the turning point where he finally starts to to take control and becomes an absolutely invaluable invaluable asset to the company and and begins to feel that that confidence in himself that he really has really has changed that he'll never go back and obviously um the effects of the ring on begin to play on him and how that that impacts him choices that he makes his moral compass how that that plays i mean it's a really i've really enjoyed uh, in both the hobbitathon and and now revisiting it for the book trying to get really get inside his head <laughs> the favorite scene oh it's so tricky um there are so many brilliant scenes i mean and obviously riddles in the dark is one that's very it is a great scene, and uh, I loved reading both both, uh, both times, both in the Hobbitathon, and which had a wildness and a chaos to it actually when I did it that time, and 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 then revisiting it and having to be more precise about it was 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 good on this. But I actually really oh, there are so many great scenes. I I, lo I love uh, the scene. I love Thorin's journey too, and I love uh, seeing him becoming increasingly more uh, craven and. Um, obsessed with the gold, with the with the dwarf gold that lies in 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 the mountain, and and that character is really interesting, and 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 it's tragic when when uh, when he finally gives into it and and uh, you know and dies. Uh, it's a really tra so that that scene I remember, and, and all the latter scenes with Bilbo taking the Arkenstone and going down and and trying to negotiate and trying to save a a, a, a very terrible war from happening um, I, I found those very potent and also I enjoyed visiting the s scenes um, bizarrely with uh, with the master of Lake Town because the master is a very very uh, resonant character for our times in terms of in terms of greed and in terms of the cult of personality and in terms of uh, being perhaps uh, more fond of himself than the 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 the, 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 the place that he governs and is supposed to look after the selfish attitude and this sort of yeah he's he's a he's a very much um 
a narcissist. So, you know, well, draw your own conclusions. But there are plenty of people out there who, who are world leaders at the moment who you can resonate with. Uh, so, so there, I mean, I don't know what the most favourite one is, but there's, there's, there's so many that I've really adored working on.